You can come to God just as you are, but you can't come to God any way that you want to. Welcome to The Whole Truth, everyone, where I am taking you through the entire Bible from Genesis all the way to Revelation without skipping anything. If that sounds good to you, make sure to reach down and hit the little subscribe button below and then open up your Bible. That's the most important part. Get into your word, get into the Bible in Leviticus chapter 10. In Leviticus chapter 10, we have been seeing the consecration of the priest. That's Aaron and his sons. They're the priest. They went through this ritual ceremony where they were in the tabernacle, had to dwell in this tent in the tabernacle for seven days. They ate the bread from the tabernacle for seven days. For seven days, they had sacrifices made for them. Blood applied to their ear, applied to their thumb, and applied to their big toe. They had to go through that ritual ceremony where the blood was applied to the altar on their behalf. And all of those things pointed forward to Christ. On the eighth day, seven days of this ritual ritual, um, um, commemoration, this ritual consecration, I should say, of them as the priest pointing forward to Christ. Then on the eighth day, they had to make more sacrifice. Remember that? And then after they made that sacrifice, God sent fire. It was fire from God and it consumed the uh, offering that was on the brazen altar. It was like God was approving of what they had done that he had commanded them to do. They had followed what he had commanded them to do and he approved. It was like his stamp of approval. Fire from God consumed that offering. And we also learned from that that no matter how many sacrifices were made, there was always another one to be made because the blood of bulls and goats can't cleanse from sin. It can't remove sin. But they were all pointing to Christ, and Christ can remove sin. That's what his sacrifice does because he's the perfect lamb. So now you're all caught up, and we come into Leviticus chapter 10, and we're going to see fire from God again, but it's not so positive. As a matter of fact, it's it's kind of hard to read. Let's do this together. Leviticus chapter 10. Look at verse 1. Then Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, each took his censer and put fire in it, put incense on it, and offered profane fire before the Lord, which he had not commanded them. So the fire went out from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. And Moses said to Aaron, this is what the Lord spoke, saying, by those who come near me, I must be regarded as holy. And before all the people, I must be glorified. So Aaron held his peace. Then Moses called Mishael and Elzaphan, the sons of Uziel, and the uncle of Aaron, and said to them, come near, carry your brethren from before the sanctuary out of the camp. So so they went near and carried them by their tunics out of the camp, as Moses had said. And Moses said to Aaron and to Eleazar and to Ithamar, his sons, do not uncover your heads nor tear your clothes, lest you die, and wrath come upon all the people. But let your brother and the whole house of Israel bewail the burning which the Lord has kindled. You shall not go out from the door of the tabernacle of meeting, lest you die, for the anointing oil of the Lord is upon you. And they did according to the word of Moses. Okay, there's the story. Nadab and Abihu, they go and get their own fire. They make their own fire. They put it into the censer. They put incense on the censer and they are burning these incense. Now, this is what the censer is going to be used for, to burn incense unto the Lord. However, there's a problem. Nadab and Abihu have not been commanded to do this. On top of that, they're not doing it the right way. They're taking coals from uh, their own coals, their own fire, and they're putting them in the, the censer rather than taking the coals from the brazen altar as they'll be commanded to do. So the or the Bible says this is a profane fire. Not only that, but there is some indication that maybe possibly they entered into the most holy of holies. They entered into the holiest of all. They entered into the behind the veil where they were not supposed to go to take those censers in. Now, you could speculate and you could say of that, well, maybe this was a pride thing. Maybe God was dealing with their pride. You could say that, you know, maybe the problem here is that these... Um, 
men were, uh, they had just been consecrated. They had gone through all that consecration ceremony for seven days. And maybe they were being puffed up with pride. Like they were something that they, that they thought they were something they weren't. And they decided to go into the most holy place. I don't know if that's true or not. I don't like to speculate. I mean, I know we all do sometimes, but I don't like to speculate and try to read something into this. The Bible's pretty clear that the reason this is profane is because they weren't commanded to do it. And the judgment from that, the consequence from that is so great that fire literally comes from God and it devours Nadab and Abihu. And God even tells us why that is. He tells Moses to tell Aaron, by those who come near me, I must be regarded as holy. As holy meaning as set apart. He is holy. He is set apart. You see, the fact is this. I think that we have a different point here, and and I hope that you'll be able to see where we're going with this. I think before I get to that, just understand that sometimes we tend to try to sit, we humans try to sit in the seat of judgment as if what God has done was wrong and like we know better than God. But if God is real, and I believe that he is, and if he created everything, and I believe that he did, and if he revealed himself in his word, which I believe he has, then I have to trust him that when my own conscience is like, man, that seems harsh. I mean, I feel bad when I when I take a newspaper to the puppy and smack his nose because he can't believe my dog just barked right then. Did you hear that? I, when I when I take the puppy and I smack his nose with the newspaper because he's made a mess in the house and I tell him, no, he's got to go outside. I usually feel bad about that because I've made the little puppy whimper. So to think about God striking these two men dead, fire coming from the Lord because these two men did something wrong, it seems harsh. But the first step for me is to trust the Lord by faith. Trust him that he is good. I believe that he is good. And so that's, that's going to be my first premise is that I'm not holier than God. I'm not more good than God. I'm not more gracious than God. I'm not more merciful than God. Look all through his word and what we see is mercy. What we see is kindness. I'm getting ready to start a store, a, a sermon series on the story of Jonah. And that's what we see out of Jonah is God's mercy. We see a story of the resurrection. And what we see from that is that God is being merciful to these people, including his own prophet, the one who thinks that he's holy. And so we trust God in his mercy and in his goodness. Now, the second thing I would tell you is this. All of these articles in the tabernacle, all of the sacrifices, all of the feast, they're all doing something. They're all pointing to Christ. They're they're called a typology. In the um, in the theological world, a typology is something from the Old Testament that foreshadows it's before Christ came, but it's like a shadow of who he would be. It's like a picture of who he would be. And so you see things like easy examples are like the lampstand and Jesus comes and says he's the light of the world, right? Those things are easy, but some of them are a little harder. Understand that this censer has incense on it and it has fire from the altar, the brazen altar. Well, incense throughout the Bible, they represent prayers. We're told that multiple times that incense represent prayers. And the fire that's on the altar is the fire that is bringing judgment. Here's the fact. I need you to to catch this. In the New Testament, in the temple, there's this veil that blocks the holiest of all, the most holy place from the rest of the temple. And when Jesus dies, the Lord ripped that temple from the top to the bottom, ripped that veil from the top to the bottom, making entrance into himself open through his son, Jesus, because Jesus was the sacrifice, just like the fire in the altar. And so you and I, we can come to God through Jesus, the son. That's how we get to him. We can't come to him however we want. We can come to him as we are. He forgives us. He cleanses us. He changes us. He makes us new. He resurrects us anew. We die with Christ. And if we can die with Christ, then we are risen with him and we get to walk in a new life with him. But I can't choose any old way to do that. I can't choose whatever way I want to do that. You see, I can offer prayers to God. To God. I can enter into his throne room and I can seek help in time of need, but only through Jesus. I can't do that another way. All right, let me get real with you. I hope that you, you're ready to get serious with me. Let me give some examples from today. You can't pick a ritual from today and decide that your ritual is going to get you to God. So let me start with a Baptist one because I preach at a Baptist church. I'm a Baptist pastor. 
Inside of the Baptist church, we have heard for years and for years and for years, we've heard pastors say like a sinner's prayer, which I actually don't mind. It doesn't bother me if somebody says the sinner's prayer, if somebody wants to lead someone to the Lord by at, by saying a prayer where somebody verbally asks God to uh, come into their heart and to save them. And I know that some of you right now, you're already bristling. You're like, the Lord never says to us to come into my heart and save me. No, but he does say that he'll, that you're his temple. He says that in Corinthians. Paul tells us that you're a temple of the Holy Spirit. And, and I think that's what we're representing. I, think, I don't think there's anything wrong with that per se. However, what happens, the danger is, and what we've seen happen, what we've seen practically happen, is that some people think that the prayer is what saves them. But friends, the prayer doesn't save you. Like, like you can go to church, you can say the prayer, and still be lost, right? Do you get that? Because God says that there's one way to come to him and it's through Jesus Christ, the son. And he says, there's only one way to do that by faith. Okay. Let me, let me make it a little harder. Let's do it again. You ready? You can't come to God because you went and lit a candle. I'm sorry. Don't be mad at me. But the truth is that God, God's command is not that you come to him by lighting a candle. There's one God and there's one mediator between God and man, and it's the man Christ Jesus. There's only one way for you to get to God. It's through Jesus the Son. It's by simple faith in Him. Do you believe that He will take you to the Father? Do you believe that His sacrifice can be applied to your life? Are you willing to follow Him because of His great love for you? That's it. It's faith in Him and only faith in Him. So here's another one. Well, I do good works in his name. Friends, you can do good works in his name and you can still be lost. Do you have your faith resting in Jesus and only in Jesus? In other words, if I believe that that because I go to another country and get people clean water in the name of Jesus, does that somehow get me to God? The answer is no. You can go in the name of Jesus. You can, you can physically say, I am bringing you clean water in the name of Jesus. But friends, if your faith is not in him, if your faith is in, but I did these good works, you've missed the point. There's even a story in the Bible about this. There's even a, a story at this parable where these people are, are saying to this king, to, to uh, this king, like, didn't we do, or excuse me, saying to the Lord, they're saying, didn't we do wonders in your name? Didn't we cast out demons in your name? Didn't we do all these things? Didn't we prophesy in your name? I mean, can you imagine prophesying and casting out demons in the name of, of the Lord? And then what's Jesus tell us? He says, the Lord's going to say, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. How can that be? Like I hear people say all the time, they say, Justin, that is, that's a troublesome, like that's so troublesome. Who, Who can enter into heaven? Who can enter into the kingdom? Friends, the answer is those who put their faith in Jesus. That is it. The thief on the cross did not prophesy in Jesus name or cast out demons in Jesus name. Are you ready? He wasn't baptized. For those of you who are trying to tell me that you have to be baptized to be saved and you're coming at me with some proof text from Mark and some other places in the Bible and saying, look, you have to be baptized. Friends, the thief on the cross could not be baptized. He was on a cross. It was his faith in Jesus that saved him. Are you with that? There's one way to God. Nadab back to Leviticus, Nadab and Abihu. They tried to come to God. They brought this fire, but it was a profane fire because it was one they made. It was one they created. It wasn't what God had commanded. And God is holy. And God who is holy has declared, you can come to him just as you are. And he's going to cleanse you. He will purify you. He will resurrect you. But you can only come to him in the name of Jesus. You can only come to him by faith in his son. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the father but by him. And anybody who tries to come another way, he's a thief. If you can't go over the wall, you don't go under the wall. You have to go through the door. And Jesus said, I am the door. There's no other way. The incense and the censer in the tabernacle were painting a picture of Christ. And you can't just do that any way you want. And that's what we see in what seems like this harsh story. But God was setting a precedence. He is holy. And you can't just come to him any way that you want to. You can only come the way that he has commanded. And how has he commanded you and I? In the Old Testament, there was an old covenant. 
the law of Moses, and they made these sacrifices, and they had these rituals. But all of those things were pointing forward to Jesus. Jesus, who in diverse ways and sundry times, he spoke in times past through the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken us through, spoken to us through his son, Jesus Christ. He is the only way. We must come to the Father, but by Him. So my challenge to you today is this. If you've been trying to come to God in some other way, if you, whether you think that's your church, whether you think that that's your uh, religious practices, whether you think that that's your good deeds or your good works, maybe you think it's because of prayer that you said or because of a baptism that happened to you or that maybe you even made a decision to do, if your faith is resting in anything else, I challenge you to repent of that and put your faith in Jesus and only Jesus. Jesus and Him crucified. That's what Paul said. Paul said who, he was a Jew of Jew. He was a Hebrew of Hebrews. And he said all of that, he, all of his works, all of his, all of his accomplishments, he considered those to be dung. He said this. He said, I, I claim to know nothing among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Is that where your faith is today? In Christ. All right, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope your faith is in Jesus as your Savior. If you'd like to talk with me about that, you can always send me a message and I'll be happy to talk with you about Jesus as your Savior, um, or at least while I still can. I guess I do get a lot of messages right now, but if I see that question, I promise I'll be happy to talk with you. All right, I'll see you tomorrow with more of Leviticus chapter 10. I'll see you then.